Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Siege of Vicksburg. This will be part one of two. Yes, I know we don't do this very often. Between Union Major General Ulysses S. Grant and his Army of the Tennessee and Confederate Lieutenant General John C. Pemberton and his Department of the Mississippi. This happened on 18th of May through the 4th of July, 1863. This part will cover May 26th through July 4th. I need to first make it clear that there is no way I can give a good recount of the battle within the time settings of this channel's videos. I am happy to give you the basics, but you'll need to find sources more dedicated to this very large battle with more than 100,000 men involved if you want the detail. On May 19th, Union General and Commanding Officer Ulysses S. Grant met up with Union's foremost naval commander, Rear Admiral David Porter, just above Vicksburg on the Yazoo River. The Union forces had built up supply depots and were forming up new reserve units. They were taking advantage of the fact that they believed, however wrongly, that Confederate General John Pemberton's forces were broken. While Pemberton had retreated and lost the last couple battles, his forces were still sizable, in good morale, and he had left two divisions of Confederate soldiers at Vicksburg itself. These Confederate troops were dug in and holding up the reinforced fortifications that oversaw Baldwin's Ferry, Graveyard Road, and Jackson Road, all three routes that the Union forces were trying to take. Union General Sherman was the first to engage the Confederate forces. He ordered his men to take the Graveyard Road, but the Union troops were not expecting the savage attack that the Confederates would unleash. The Confederates shredded the Union troops and stopped their momentum. In fact, the Confederate troops had started pushing forward, and it took another attack by Union Generals James B. McPherson and John A. McClernand's corps to push the Confederates back to their original position. Grant realized his error in assumptions about Pemberton and pulled his troops back for three days. Falling back on our trusty artillery, the Union forces slammed the Confederate defenses again with incredible amount of artillery on May 22nd. Even this attack didn't stop the Confederates from handily pushing back both McPherson and Sherman's attack. Unfortunately for the Confederates, they just weren't able to fully stop McClernand's forces, who had secured the railroad redoubt. Following up on the apparent success, Sherman and McPherson tried multiple times to attack again, but they were pushed back each time by the never-ending reinforcements the Confederates seemed to have. Grant realized he couldn't take the city in a single attack and pulled back. It was at this time that Grant ordered for a siege to take place instead. The Union engineers began the process of instituting a siege around the city of Vicksburg. The purpose was to cut off ammunition, food, and reinforcements. They did this by a judicious use of digging trenches towards the Confederate lines, 13 of them to be exact. Along with this, they established breaching batteries and utilized the Union Navy to block off any river traffic. Casualties themselves will be addressed in the second part of this battle, as there is no separate casualty list for the initial contact between both armies. Join us again next time for part two of the Battle of Vicksburg.